It's The Real News. I'm Ben Norton. The world has been shocked in recent weeks by images of young immigrant children torn away from their families at the southern border of the United States. In audio recordings obtained by journalists, children can be heard screaming for their parents. <laughs> U.S. Customs and Border Protection is putting these children in cages where temperatures are sometimes freezing and they have nothing but a space blanket. And there are also reports of widespread physical abuse and even sexual assault of these detained children. Yet at the same time, dogs in the custody of Customs and Border Protection get lavish treatment at a pet resort contracted by the DHS. Ken Klippenstein, an investigative reporter with the Young Turks, recently revealed this in a report titled, As DHS Puts Children in Cages, Guess Where They're Putting Dogs. We're joined by Ken today to talk about this shocking story. Thanks for joining us, Ken. Hey, Ben. Thanks so, thanks so much for having me. So can you talk a bit more about this story? Uh, and you mentioned in the report, um, you, ac you reviewed public records and uh, the DHS is contracting a pet resort where dogs are sleeping inside in temperature controlled doggy suites. And you mentioned they have maid service and quote, plush double sided sheepskin bedding, end quote, while at the same time children detained by the same US government department are put in cages. Yeah, there's sort of a darkly comic um, quality to it, especially when you consider uh, the fact that, you know, the president has called, um, you know, many of these immigrants, uh, quote, animals. Uh, that may have been uh, too kind of um, rhetoric for him, given that, uh, you know, at least in this instance, they treat them worse than animals, than dogs. Um, as you point out, um, you know, reputable human rights organizations like Human Rights Watch has um, in the past reported that, um, th uh, you know, detainees in, in ICE or DHS custody, rather, have been made to sleep on concrete slabs, um, freezing cold temperatures. They've reported, and these are, you know, a number of different reports, not just, not just a few individuals. And um, so, when you compare that with the treatment of dogs in DHS custody, unfortunately, the records didn't say whether these were service dogs or, you know, dogs that they obtained, uh, you know, in the course of any other, um, you know, activities. But um, it did say, as you point out, that they were given plush bedding. They have maid service. Um, unfortunately, these aren't <laughs> things that. Uh, actual humans appear to be, would appear to be entitled to uh, with the DHS. Yeah, and actually here at The Real News, I recently interviewed Nino Brown, who is an organizer with the Jericho Movement, which is a movement to advocate for the rights of political prisoners here in the U.S. And he talked about how at uh, a prison in Massachusetts, where Malcolm X had previously been held, in fact, uh, there are detainees who are being forced to drink polluted water that is polluted with different chemicals, while dogs that they're training at, at the prison get water bottles. So this is certainly widespread. It's symptomatic of, of larger issues. Um, so can you talk a bit more about your reporting and then also the reporting we've seen in recent weeks on the detention of these children by CBP and also you can mention ICE? Well, to talk a little bit more about it, I mean, the dogs are even permitted uh, more outdoor playtime than these uh, children uh, detainees are. So uh, the children detainees are only allowed out two hours out of the day, according to reporting that you know has come out in the last couple of weeks, uh, dogs can have up to four hours. So it's twice as much time as children can have. And I mean, <laughs> you know how much kids need to be able to exercise. Any child psychologist can tell you that's absolutely crucial. Um, it's not the same as an adult you need to go outside and get exercise, although of course we need that as well. Um, and so I just thought that was kind of striking. Um, once again, you know, in, in light of uh, his comments about, uh, you know, immigrants being animals, um, that he's treating them even worse than, even worse than that. Um, and uh, I think we should all sort of reflect on uh, the Zimbardo prison studies and, and, and what, what we might take back from that in terms of um, what we could anticipate to be, uh, you know, treatment of individuals who have far less power than um, the, uh, you know, guards that are um, watching over them. That, that being completely aside from um, the really quite inflammatory uh, rhetoric on the part of the president that, that, that may even empower um, you know, undesirable activity of that sort. Yeah, and I'm wondering if we could conclude here talking a bit about how this policy actually is not entirely new, um, although it's completely shocking. And there's no question that it's gotten worse in recent years as the Trump administration has given CBP and ICE uh, carte blanche to do whatever they want. Um, but this actually really goes back to the post 9-11 war on terror era that we're in. Um, the Bush administration created the Department of Homeland Security under which ICE um, and now CBP are, are, are part of the U.S. government's um, department. And we've seen, 
you know, under the Bush administration, also under the Barack Obama administration, an intensification of a kind of war on immigrants, massive deportations, um, record no levels of deportations, and the Trump administration has continued to exacerbate this. Um, as a reporter, Ken, you focused a bit on uh, the Trump administration and also the Obama administration. I'm wondering if you can reflect on how this is bipartisan policy that has gotten even worse under Trump. That's absolutely right. Um, there's been an intensification of it, but there's no question that, I mean, you know, ICE didn't exist uh, 30 years ago. This is a new institution. And so when people say, you know, maybe we ought to get rid of ICE entirely, I don't see that as, you know, that, that wouldn't seem to be such a radical policy given that it didn't exist um, not that long ago. People have this idea that, you know, perhaps this is an institution that, you know, was enshrined in the Constitution or maybe at least in the post-war period, and that's just not true. Um, and going back to Obama, yeah, there were, you know, there were um, significant rights groups that were calling him, quote, the deporter-in-chief. So um, while Trump certainly is pursuing, you know, these policies with a more, you know, much more aggressively than um, his predecessor did, there's no question that um, Obama laid the uh, groundwork for um, these kind of things to happen. So, yeah, any... Any solution, I think, has to take into account um, that fact and the fact that they really, you, you know, he had a powerful congressional majority and um, the Democratic Party, you know, it would seem that um, a big part of their constituency would be, uh, you know, people who have family who who are who might be impacted by by these, uh, but you know, by the by these ICE policies. So I think it's really sort of scandalous that they didn't that they didn't tackle those things uh, when they had the chance. Now, of course, the Democrats are. Uh, I think essentially irrelevant at this point, um, given that they, you know, control none of the bodies of um, government. And so uh, in that sense, we sort of have to deal with what's in front of us, I think. But um, there's certainly a history there. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we were speaking with Ken Klippenstein, who is an investigative reporter who contributes to the Young Turks and also the Daily Beast. We were discussing an, a shocking new report he has titled, As DHS Puts Children in Cages, Guess Where They're Putting Dogs. Thanks for speaking with us, Ken. Hey, thanks so much, Ben. For The Real News, I'm Ben Norton.